Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. By nature, I happen to be a teacher, and we teachers love to listen to our students. So how are you doing this evening? I figured why they put me last in the speaker's list, because they checked my college record. I used to be an outstanding student in college, standing outside the college more often. And I studied engineering, chemical engineering here in Bangalore University. And I studied a lot. Normally, people study for four, and I studied for six years. <laughs> and, and I distinctly remember when I completed my fourth semester, which is uh, my, after my second year, I had a showdown with my mother. You know, Khandan ka naam was barbad. You know, uh, Izzat was in the mitti. And, you know, I could... I could do nothing right at those days. So I did what I thought was best. I joined politics. Yeah. And I was with student politics for a year. And uh, remember, I wasted two years out of college. So the first year went with some very innovative work in politics. And I achieved, achieved nothing out of it. And in my second year, I decided I'd do something better. I became an entrepreneur. I just started off, uh, I, the only thing that I was good at, and that's the reason why I used to be outstanding, is because I spoke a lot in class. What do you do with a kid who talks too much? You just chuck him out of class, right? And, and somehow when I look back, my teachers didn't realize my talent. I get paid to talk these days. <laughs> you know, so and there began my journey of working with schools and colleges and, and in the education space. When I look at education from the outside, this is what I see. It's all about a livelihood. Everyone wants to get their kids into a good school. And once you've gotten into a good school, you need to get good grades. Once you've got good grades, you need to get into a good college with a hope that one fine day, you will get to land up a good job for yourself. Isn't that how it works? You know what's the irony? Most of our graduates are unemployable. Statistics after statistics, research after research has proved that the system that we are trying to foster, we get very excited about accessibility of education. We're very excited that we have a lot of children going into school. But the fact of the matter remains, what we are teaching them is not necessarily relevant for life. A child that goes into grade one in school this year, in all likelihood, will work up to 2080. Thought about that? 2080. Baba black ship, seriously? You know, in this entire process of getting our children educated, we forget that there's a life that they have to live. And there's no subject in our curriculum that's trying to cater to the life. And livelihood is just a small part of our lives. Now, think about this. Children need to learn to live a life, to know themselves. Uh, for example, you know, look at our educational system and how beautifully it fosters creativity, doesn't it? Wow, seriously? Creativity and education are poles apart. And we all know about that. Let me talk about another interesting thing which our educational system does. It makes fantastic, selfish beings out of all of us across the globe. From the time I started my education, it was my class, my books, my homework, my assignment, my test, my project, and my grades, my graduation, my job, my life. It was all about me. And look at all our cities, most parts of the world. Inside our houses, beautiful. And what have we done to our cities? That's what you taught us, remember? My house is clean. Think about it. We've made such selfish beings out of our little kids. We need to know the world that we live in. My name is Syed Sultan Ahmed. It can't get more Muslim than that. I grew up in Bangalore. And I'm extremely proud of the Christian missionary education that I got for myself. When I was growing up in an old boy's school, the, you know, one of the biggest things that my friends used to pull my leg was, uh, I used to be the shortest one in school, not that I've grown up. 
And uh, I mean, it was it was all in fun. And you know, when I look back, really loved my school days. I dread going to school today. Imagine a Syed Sultan Ahmed going to a school in Bangalore, and he's been called a terrorist. Seriously, how do I cope up with that? When are we ever going to educate our children and bring issues which are out there in the world, which are in the face of our kids, into our classrooms? We are happy with Pythagoras' theorem and Eureka's. We're really, really happy with that. And it's really time that we not reinvent the system. I think we need to just throw it out of the window and create an entirely new one. But the challenges are many. Let's look at the way we're trying to improve our system. Education means teaching. We've all been told that every time education happens, you need to have this one figure for thousands of years who had all the knowledge and who's going to teach us. And now we're evolved. We live in the Silicon Valley of India, or maybe probably the world. And uh, we have a lot of digital education. Look closely at the digital education. Absolutely every form of digital education, and most of it, is trying to replicate a teacher. We believe that for education to happen, you need this one person who's trying to get us educated. I learned, I've studied in some of the best colleges of the planet, and my biggest lesson was picked up by my granddad who never went to school or to college. I remember him distinctly telling me. I asked him, how did you make it so big in life? You never went to school or college. He said, my teachers are always with me. And I was like, who are your teachers? As a little kid, he asked me, what is this? I said, eyes. He said, what's this? I said, ears. He said, those are my teachers. And we never teach our children to listen to our, their own teachers. And if we had a subject which taught them to see the world around them and see things which they don't observe, they would be a lot more empathetic. If we taught our children to listen to the voices out there, we would have, we'd be living in a much better world. But somehow we are happy with, you know, content and curriculum. And by the way, uh, educators love boring, right? How many of you think that education is a very, very serious subject? Put up your hands, please. How many of you think that education is a very serious subject, right? And how many of you think that the governments, the society, the parents, all of us have to take it very seriously? Put up your hands, please. And that's a problem. We've taken it so seriously that children find it very boring. We've disconnected ourselves from the fact that education needs to be an enjoyable experience, otherwise you're not learning. Children learn. I've been working with kids now for almost 20 years. And here's one of the best ways to kill a subject. You know how you kill a subject? <laughs> Introduce it into the part of the curriculum. I will give you umpteen number of examples of how this happens. Let's take civics. I live in the largest democracy on the planet. Let's take civics, for example. Every election has proved that all of us who studied civics for five or six goddamn years are the ones who never go out and vote. You and I are the ones who studied physical training. Remember PT? Yeah, and we're the healthiest nation on the planet. Okay, let's take yoga. I've talk, spoken to hundreds and hundreds of children who've studied yoga in school, they've taken a vow never to practice yoga. And that's the best way you kill it. So what has the so-called curriculums done? They've introduced life skills as a part of the curriculum. Now you know where life skills is headed. They're never going to practice that, the children. So to cut a very, very long story short, I've always looked at the world and tried and seen, you know, otherwise I can go on and on talking about this. But the question is, what can you do about it? Uh, I'm not going to talk about accessibility. This is one thing that I've learned. You can't teach children. I've spent almost two decades working with kids, hundreds of thousands of children, and this is something that I've learned. But the interesting thing is children learn, and they learn from experiences. Children learn from experiences that are entertaining and engaging. And as educators, if we can create that atmosphere, if we can create an experience which is entertaining and engaging, that can be a phenomenal learning experience for them. Now, I run one of the largest events companies anywhere on the planet. I work with kids, and we do events for hundreds of thousands of kids. Uh, Holix Whiskids, the Financial Quest, a lot of events which travel across South Asia and the Middle East are done by us. And I know that events can be a great learning experience. But what I want to talk to you about is cinema. 
I've always picked up short clips of films and used it as a part of my learning program. How many of you love cinema? Put up your hands. Oh, we love cinema, right? We are the world's largest filmmaking country. And somehow, I'm using this word with a lot of responsibility, we've relegated cinema to only entertainment. We've never used the power of cinema beyond that. And the challenge is that it's, cinema is such a wonderful and a powerful tool. A lot of in-depth work, which me and my team have done in it, cinema is possibly the only medium that blends audiovisual, storytelling, entertainment, and emotions. And as an educator, let me tell you, I can use any one of them to teach. It leaves a long-lasting impact. You know, I live in a country where cinema has changed our culture, our societies. You know, I live in a country where, you know, when did you ever know that in Malayalam there's a, in, you know, in Kerala you have a Mehendi ceremony, and in Pakistan you've got a Sangeet ceremony happening? It's all the influence of cinema. That's how strong the influence of cinema can be. So what did we do? We tried an experiment. Because there were not enough good films for children. The world's largest filmmaking country, the world's largest young population, I can bet you will struggle to name 10 good films if I, if I give you some time for you to come up with 10 films, right? There are not enough good films. So we just set out with an experiment and we'd made a film. Five years ago, never made a film ever. Not even gone close to making a film. Padmavati Rao, a, a Bangalore-based filmmaker, made this film. It was 40 odd minutes. I took this to people that I knew best, to school principals, screened this across to over a thousand principals across the country, picked up a learning, came back, and innovated something called as an educator's approach to making cinema. And that approach starts with research, trying to understand the issues that our children need to be addressed with. For example, bullying. Bullying is not a big issue in our schools, but ragging is. But if you have to address ragging in colleges, you need to talk to our kids when they were 10 and 11. You need to talk about issues which, you know, for example, adolescence is something that we do for a lot of adolescent sessions happen for girls. How many boys underwent an adolescent session in school? Put up your hands, please. No, they just assumed that you guys knew how to handle your adolescence. <laughs> you know, when I was growing up, you know, I, I learned a lot of poems which, you know, my teachers told me that we all need to grow up to be happy and gay. I said, yeah, yeah, we all need to grow up to be happy and gay. Now imagine a nine-year-old has a question, am I gay? How do you answer that question? Is it physics or chemistry? Is it math or geography? I mean, you need to figure that out, right? So we've made films on issues like, why do I get angry? We made, we made films on an issue like being happy with what you have, respecting religious sensitivity or cultural tolerance. We've made a film on following traffic rules. And these films are made by some of the brightest young filmmakers in this country. We didn't stop at that, because education is incomplete if you don't educate the parents. You know, one of the biggest challenges of education in India and in most parts of the world is an educated parent who believes they know what education is. And how would you educate them? And here's one of the formats for you. So films that teach parenting, issues like when parents are quarreling, how does it impact a child, how the children learn bad habits from uh, parents, you know, specific issues which are so difficult to talk to kids and their parents. And we've made a lot of films for teachers as well. Lack of time, I'm just going to be skipping that, right? And five years ago, ladies and gentlemen, I had no clue what cinema was about. In 2016, as I stand here, School Cinema, the project that we started, has won four President of India's National Film Awards, over 200 international film festivals. And you know what's the best part? We have 700,000 children using this as a part of their curriculum. I just want to leave you with a message. Let's make education entertaining. Thank you.